Okay, I'm Rakin. I'm a chief physiotherapist at Adelaide Living Care and Rehabilitation Center. And today, uh, I'm going to share you some uh, important uh, protocols and regimes that we're going to be uh, following for this home physio or physiotherapy practice in home services. Okay, this will be uh, part one of two. Second uh, part, we will be uh, announcing the date in a later later time. Okay, so it's important to know the, the names of the services as well as the type of packages and what are the uh, protocols or regimes that we're going to do in each of the service packages. Okay, okay so the agenda for today will be, we're going to have a look at all the physiotherapy packages that uh, is provided uh, by FYS. Okay. Next, we're going to see uh, general services to include in the package sessions. What are the interventions that we're going to use, uh, modalities, techniques. And lastly, we're going to go through at least the first four, sorry, the first eight packages, uh, the regimes and protocols for that, okay, and what to do. So let's have a look at the physiotherapy packages here. So it's divided into 16 parts. As you can see, we have we have uh, repetitive uh, names here, but do not, get, do not get confused. We have, for example, uh, physiotherapy for ache and pain, one session. And then we have physiotherapy for ache and pain package, 10 sessions. So uh, each of these uh, services or packages, okay, is either it comes in one session or 10 sessions here. So let's go through. Physiotherapy for ache and pain, one session. Physiotherapy for ache and pain package, 10 sessions. Physiotherapy for arthritis, one session. Physiotherapy for arthritis package, 10 sessions. Physiotherapy for post-fracture, one session. Physiotherapy for post-fracture package, 10 sessions. Physiotherapy for post spine hip knee surgery one session physiotherapy for post spine hip knee surgery package 10 sessions physiotherapy for post stroke care one session physiotherapy for post stroke care package 10 sessions endurance training one session endurance training package 10 sessions fall prevention one session fall prevention package 10 sessions and then general strengthening or ambulation package uh, physiotherapy one session and then general uh, strengthening ambulation package, 10 sessions. Okay, so do keep in mind and remember the, the names of the packages as these are the ones that we're going to case to the clients. So they get to pick which one uh, is the one that you're interested in. Here's the next agenda, general services to include in package session. So we've seen, we have have a look in the package sessions over here. It, this is the list of package uh, sessions uh, divided into one session or 10 sessions for each of the types. Okay, so let's have a look at the general services that we we can include in, in these uh, sessions or package sessions. So the first one is uh, pain relief services. Okay, uh, the main goal is, as the name suggests, is to manage and relieve pain. Okay, so the modalities and techniques that we will be using is cryotherapy, thermotherapy, tense and soft tissue manipulation. Let's have a look at one uh, each of them. So ice pack or cryotherapy, the usage of uh, this particular old ice gel pack. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, wrap inside around a towel, okay, depending on the, the thickness of the towel. If the towel is thin, then you might have to put a few layers. If it's thick, maybe one will do. So the indication for ice pack would be, uh, let's say, a client is uh, complaining of pain and it's acute case. So we'll see inflammation, redness, warmth. So the duration of uh, applying ice pack is about 15 minutes. And as the method suggests, uh, just now uh, wrap the ice pack towel, place over affected area, and uh, make sure to check the skin condition of where you're compressing or placing the ice every five minutes to ensure there's no ice burn. Okay, that's very uh, important. Maybe when we are test, we're wrapping a towel, we might think that it's thick enough. But uh, for cautious reasons, I just check if it's too cold, uh, and you're seeing signs of like the skin is getting hard or too cold, you know, ice burns. So make sure to increase the number of layers. So the mechanism of ice pack is it helps to slow down the nociceptive uh, nerve fiber conduction. Okay, uh, so if you remember uh, pain gate theory, heard of that before. Pain gate theory uh, is the pain uh, stimulus, nociceptive pain. It okay, will travel to the spine via the uh, nerve fibers A, 
uh, delta and also nerve fiber C. Okay, so uh, we want to reduce the intensity of the pain. We can slow down the nerve fiber conduction of those two. Okay, that, that's one way the uh, ice pack can help tackle. Another re another uh, mechanism is it helps to reduce the swelling buildup at the inflamed tissue by re by slowing down the metabolism of the tissue of the cells that are producing the swelling or the edema. So the contraindication for ice pack is let's say the client has impaired sensation. So this is when you're testing a brief sensation test or sensory test, and, and you find out that the sensation is impaired or not present. Okay, so this is contraindicated. Uh, another one is complex regional pain syndrome. Okay, it usually happens after post-traumatic experiences, okay, where the, where the, the sensation, uh, where the, the particular affected area is hypersensitive. Just a bit of pressure is painful for them, a bit of cold is too cold for them, a bit hot is too hot for them, so they're very hypersensitive. So this, and then uh, they are uh, particularly distinguished by, sometimes you will see patches of hair growing over there. So this is one a sign or symptom of a complex regional pain syndrome. Okay, sometimes you will see uh, obvious swelling there also. So if you see those signs and symptoms and you see they are hypersensitive, so uh, best not use any uh, thermotherapy or cryotherapy but pack or thermotherapy so we'll be using the same gel gel pack okay uh, but this one uh, it can be heated okay either boiling water uh, and then you soak it in for for like five five minutes to get it up to temperature or uh, there, there are some uh, gel packs that are microwave safe you can microwave and then get the achieve the, the heat lah. okay so the gel pack will be the same we will uh, wrap it around towels and it's indicated for chronic phase uh, pain relief so chronic as in more than three months and it's best used for let's say soreness okay or uh, postural problems Pain. So the duration is similar, 15 minutes, and the method is uh, wrap hot pack in towel and place over the affected area. Make sure to check the skin, similar to just now, 5 minutes for any burn injury. If it's not enough layers, uh, it can lead to burns, uh, maybe first degree burn, so you want to prevent that, you have to check every 5 minutes. Lah. Make sure, maybe you can test it on ourselves before we actually apply to, to the client. Lah. So the, mechan uh, the mechanism is... Uh, of the hot pack is number one, it helps to reduce uh, muscle tightness and spasms, relax the muscle activity, uh, and thus we, uh, reduce the tightness and spasms that comes along with it. Okay, increases metabolism and blood flow to area. Okay, so so with with increased heat, uh, what happens is uh, the the blood vessels there will vasodilate. Okay, at least the superficial uh, blood vessels there. And then that will promote more blood flow to the region and thus improve the metabolism and as well as uh, improve the clearance of the toxins nearby there. Okay, another one is it helps to activate endogenous uh, opioids to inhibit nociception. Okay, uh, if you have heard about endogenous opioids, they are inhibitors of the um, let's see, inhibitors of the nociceptive fibers. That I mentioned earlier. So once we once they are activated, they help to actually block out the receptors, and thus the patient will, will feel less pain. Okay, the nociception is inhibited. So the contraindication for heart attack is number one is impaired sensation, and also complex regional pain syndrome, and also infectious uh, arthritis or septic arthritis. Okay, because uh, if there is uh, if you are applying it at the joint area, it is affected. Okay, and, and there is uh, some sort of uh, bacterial viral infection in area, so thermotherapy can actually make it worse. Okay, number one, because of the inflammation, and number two is uh, you know, improving the blood flow there, so you're actually uh, risking uh, the sepsis to actually travel around the body, uh, which has a risk of becoming systemic sepsis shock. So you want to prevent that. Okay, next we'll talk about uh, a common ectotherapy that I think uh, most if not all physiotherapists are aware of or know of. This is the 
machine or the transcutaneous electrical uh, to stimulate the, the nerves and also the uh, musculo nerve junction, neuromuscular junctions, so that it will help to relieve pain. So the equipment required is the TENS machine, the TENS pad, and uh, you may need alcohol or soapy water if the patient has too dry of the skin. Okay, So if it's too dry of the skin, then the electrical conduction is going to be uh, less. So you might have to increase the, the intensity, which is not recommended, maybe because of the dry skin. So the indication is uh, as per parameters. If it's acute, you would recommend you use the normal mode, uh, 100 hertz for frequency and 180 microseconds for the uh, pulse width. If chronic, we would recommend you use the burst mode with 10 hertz for frequency and 200 microseconds for the pulse width. Okay, these are the actually manufacturer recommended uh, settings for, for, for acute and chronic pain. Duration would be ranging around 15 to 20 minutes. And the method is to place two pairs of tennis pad at a muscular area nearby the affected region. Okay, you can place it at the muscle belly or you can place it at the origin and insertion of the muscle that you want to target. Set the suitable parameters as per uh, the indication and set the intensity based on the patient's or the client's comfort. Okay, uh, make sure you do it slowly so that the, uh, the client doesn't get shocked. So the mechanism of TENS is it helps to actually activate targeted uh, A-beta fibers, okay, uh, which helps to inhibit the nociceptive fibers. Okay, as per the Pinky theory, it will help to block up the neurotransmitter chemicals that are uh, in charge of making your pain so helps to actually inhibit that. So the contract indication is impaired sensation as if you apply at nearby metal implants. So nearby metal implants uh, that's not recommended and also impaired sensation. Let's look at uh, soft tissue manipulation or STM. So the equipment required uh, is a neutral massage oil. I'm sure they sell it at the pharmacy if you've seen, seen one before. The indication is to improve uh, scar uh, scar formation uh, so that it's not too tight uh, and also to improve surrounding soft tissue mobility, pain relief and also to improve circulation. So duration is 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, the method uh, uh, is included but not limited to uh, scar massage, beading uh, or we, we call it patissage and also gentle strokes and there's also deep friction massage. So the mechanism of STM is it helps to soften scar tissues or even keloid formation, uh, especially after surgery. Okay, after surgery, uh, like, a, like a major surgery or open surgery. So what happens is uh, scar tissue will form as part of the healing process. And, and in some cases, even keloid might form. Okay, so you want to prevent those formation from actually uh, limiting the range of motion Okay, uh, so this helps to soften the scar formation and blood formation. Again, it also uh, helps to uh, soften the tight surrounding soft tissues, maybe uh, due to the region is swelling. So if the region is swelling or has an edema, okay, uh, uh, you can actually use the effleurage technique to guide the edema into the, the nearby limb nodes and thus reducing the edema. Another one is to promote blood flow to region, STM or massage at the area. Uh, you're actually uh, playing with friction there and, and this helps to actually create heat there. And with heat, just like thermotherapy, uh, it's a superficial, uh, STM is like a superficial a heating agent which helps to promote blood circulation to them. And then it also helps to inhibit nociceptive fibers to relieve pain. Okay, uh, it helps to trigger the, the tactile receptors and which will also trigger the alpha, uh, A beta uh, nerve fibers and which helps to inhibit the pain receptors. So the contraindication is directly at the wound site, especially the wound is not right yet. Hypersensitivity and also sepsis complication. So the next uh, general services or category of general services to include in the package sessions is the general exercise services. Okay, the exercise prescriptions that we're going to give 
to the clients. You can see here is a wide variety. Okay, we have range of motion exercise, stretching exercise, strengthening exercise, joint mobilization, balance training, positioning, joint approximation exercise, and coordination training. <clears throat> Let's see one by one. So range of motion uh, is divided into three types. We have passive, active assisted, and also active. Uh, some of the equipments that you might require is like a stick or a towel. Okay, especially uh, maybe you might need it for active assisted uh, range of motion exercises. So the indication of range of motion is to is for those with poor circulation to the area, especially after surgery where you have to immobilize a certain part. Okay, so you might have to do a uh, circulation uh, uh, or range of motion exercise like the distal joints that's not affected, so that it helps to promote blood circulation to to the whole limb, for example. And then another indication is to maintain range of motion. So the duration is five to ten minutes. Uh, method is a repetitive active range of motion or active assisted range of motion or passive range of motion of the joints within available range of motion. So uh, what I mean by within available range of motion is within pain-free range of motion. Okay, even if you feel that you can go further, if the if the client is uh, complaining of pain at that certain degree of movement, that is the limit of the range of motion that the uh, client can withstand. Uh, with, with, with stand up. So we we call it uh, MTN field uh, range of motion. So the mechanism is for range of motion is helps to improve uh, blood flow to the area, as you know range of motion is something like a pumping kind of action which pumps blood to the area and out of the area uh, and which helps to promote healing while also reducing stiffness as well. Contraindication is uh, joints near the fracture site. Okay, If the fracture is at one bone above and below, we should not move the joints uh, one, one, one joint below and above of that fracture bone. Acute uh, acute inflammatory conditions, okay, uh, severe uh, stage uh, arthritis or, or rheumatoid arthritis, septic joints and also tumors. Okay, with tumors, uh, especially those uh, which are cancerous, uh, we do not want to move the joints uh, as it promotes uh, blood flow to the area and. Uh, any cancer that has metastasized can take advantage of this and spread even further. We don't want to do that. Okay, next is the stretching exercise. We have two types. We have gentle and normal. Okay. Gentle is more uh, recommended for acute cases or pain uh, or recent pain, okay, which are uh, very sensitive. Okay. So the equipment required is you can use a stick and towel. Okay, so the indication is for any type musculoskeletal structures, Muscular, uh, any muscular imbalances, uh, maybe uh, in front is tight, behind is weak, which causes any muscle imbalances. So increase hypertonicity, so hypertonic muscle. Okay, is also uh, indicated for stretching exercise. Duration is five to ten minutes. Method is passively stretch the targeted muscle groups in uh, opposite direction to the normal contraction. Okay, uh, so uh, if the normal contraction of the muscle is from insertion to origin, so we'll be uh, stretching the muscle from origin to insertion direction. To gently stretch beyond available range up to where pain is tolerable. Okay, so this one is, a, this one is an important point. Make sure the, the stretch you're giving is within 6 out of 10 bus scale. Okay. Uh, that, the, that the client is able to withstand, okay, shouldn't exceed more as it increases the risk of overstretch and overstretching actually makes it worse and makes it makes the muscle into guard, muscle guarding position, uh, which uh, makes it even more tighter. So the mechanism of stretching exercise is to realign disorganized uh, sarcomere or muscle fibers in the direction of the tension. Elongate and reduce reduces muscle fiber overlapping. The contraindication for stretching is any fracture, any nearby fracture sites, okay, especially acute fractures. Uh, acute 
inflammatory condition and if they have hypermobility of joints okay, as this one can increase the risk of subluxation and even dislocation of the joint if it's too hypermobile next one is strengthening exercise uh, i've divided it into isometric eccentric and concentric exercises and the equipments are a lot you can just use your body weight or you can even use external tools like uh, weight resistance, dumbbells, weight curl, even TeraBand. So the indication is to maintain or increase muscle strength and pain relief. So the duration is about uh, 5 to 10 minutes for this session, uh, as part of the session. Uh, but when looking at the exercise prescription, it should be around 10 repetitions for two sets. Uh, do it slowly. Uh, so it's more of a quality over quantity lah. or until the patient is tired the method is have the patient to use suitable weighted resistant tools to contract targeted muscle groups to strengthen that particular muscle group uh, eccentric and concentric contractions you can utilize the 10 rm rule repetitive maximum rule okay how many can they do within 10 repetition it's a, it's a good uh, calculator on, uh, online which can help to uh, check your 10RM based on your 1RM. So 1RM is how much, how, how heavy can you carry within one repetition, how heavy is your maximum. And you'll calculate your 10RM based on that. Uh, if it's isometric exercise, uh, that's basically just uh, uh, using using the, the body weight. Lah. Okay, uh, without moving the, the length of muscle fibers, uh, you are eliciting a contraction. So, the mechanism is it helps to uh, strengthen the exercise, overloads and builds strength of the targeted muscle group by uh, the resistive equipment and promotes release of uh, endogenous opioids to inhibit pain. Okay, uh, Sweating, so the adrenaline and whatnot will actually help to trigger the release of endogenous opioids to inhibit any pain. Okay. The contraindication for strengthening exercise is uh, uh, relating to the uh, recent fractured area, acute inflammatory conditions, and also uh, any severe joint conditions. So here are some examples that uh, that you can commonly use for strength exercise at a home-based practice. Uh, for example, for isometrics, you can prescribe SQE, which is static quads exercise, inner range quads exercise, and also pelvic tilts, and, and even uh, provide uh, manual isometric uh, resistance. For eccentric, is like mini squats, half squats, and bridging exercise. For concentric uh, exercise, we have uh, can use uh, weight cuffs, dumbbells, and you can actually uh, do the sit up exercise. Okay, and, and you can apply manual resistance there to have them feel even more difficulty. So next one is joint mobilization. So for the equipment, you don't need anything except your hands. Uh, and perhaps maybe you need a pillow if you're going to support the particular structure but other than that nothing much the indication is to prevent joint stiffness in the chronic stage uh, as well as uh, if there's any poor articular relationship uh, maybe tight uh, internal structures for the soft tissues around the particular joint which are tight and also to uh, promote pain relief Duration is about 5 to 10 minutes. So the method is to apply joint mobilization based on based, based on joint available uh, movement and appropriate grade. Uh, this one we're using uh, Maitland, uh, Maitland uh, uh, what do you call it? Maitland technique. Okay. So, so the Maitland mobilization or the Maitland technique is a, a very uh, effective uh, technique in in improving uh, joint stiffness and also articular relationship. How is uh, Maitland actually divided it into grade one and grade two for pain relief and grade three and grade four to improve the range of motion of the said uh, joint. Okay, so 
this one is using uh, utilizing rhythmic oscillatory uh, motion, okay, which is like uh, oscillation with appropriate amplitude. Uh, if you remember, grade one is big amplitude, grade one is small amplitude, grade two and three is big amplitude, and grade four is small amplitude. Yeah, with appropriate amplitude to achieve release of the tight structures surrounding the targeted joint. Help to improve the blood and joint articulation. Uh, pain relief via the touch pain uh, receptor inhibition, which helps to release encephalins and endorphins. So the contraindication for joint mop is uh, acute fracture sites, a advanced or severe osteoarthritis, or any uh, particular inflammation of the joint in a severe stage, septic joint and so too. Next we have balance training. A balance training is divided uh, either by sitting and standing balance training or static and dynamic. So the equipment required, uh, you may need to use like a balance hold for the standing part. So indication is poor balance. And also, if they have a risk of falling, balance training can help to at least reduce that. So the duration is, for balance training is recommended around 5 to 10 minutes. Method is... Uh, to train the patient's capability to hold their balance or center of gravity uh, with minimal sway okay, within one minute with supervision. Uh, the mechanism is it challenges the visual, vestibular, and also the proprioceptive skills to work together in order to maintain uh, equilibrium or balance. So the contraindication is any recent fractures or surgery, advanced or severe osteoarthritis, vertigo or vertigo, and also tumors. So the progress for balance training uh, is usually, especially after surgery or post fracture, is you start out with a sitting at the edge of the bed okay, with support. Uh, that's your starting position. Have then sit at the edge of the bed. Uh, static balance training uh, when you release the balance, but uh, with supervision. If they're able to do that, then you progress to sitting dynamic. If they're able to do that, then uh, once they're able to wait there, then you progress to standing. Uh, balance training, uh, static on the foam pad, uh, and dynamic, uh, sorry, static is on the floor, and dynamic is on the balance foam. Next is positioning. So the equipment required is pillows, elevation foam. So the picture here is the is what we call an elevation foam, but you might just use uh, stacked pillows to achieve the same uh, purpose. So the indication is uh, swelling or edema, uh, bed sores, post-stroke, uh, bedridden patient. So duration is about five minutes to achieve the, the appropriate positioning. Method is position pillows to elevate swollen limb. Okay, uh, if the limb that you're targeting is the hand or the leg, so position it in a way so that the limb is elevated. So as, uh, the gravity can help to push the, uh, the swelling down or the edema back into the limb. Uh, method is to maintain appropriate standing position. So, so uh, like post-stroke, bedridden patient, you want to prevent bed sores okay, or bed, uh, also pro uh, bed ulcers. So, so what you're going to do is you're going to position them uh, or turning the, the, the clients uh, one side and changing their positions and also uh, placing pillows to support that position. So the mechanism is utilizing gravity to assist to push the edema back to the circulation system, enable appropriate body part positioning to prevent excessive pressure onto bony region. So some of the contraindications is like deep vein thrombosis due to prolonged immobility that causes uh, uh, thrombus formation in the deep vein. Unstable fractures, uh, severe circulation problem. Next is joint approximation exercise. Um, equipment required is nothing much, maybe a chair. So the indication is uh, uh, targeted for hypertonic muscle group, especially post uh, stroke. Duration is about 5 to 10 minutes. The method is to apply axial joint pressure onto the affected limb. What I mean by axial joint is longitudinal uh, pressure towards the joint of the limb. The whole limb to feel the pressure, so it has to be in X tension position. Uh, so apply axial joint pressure onto affected limb with weight bearing, holding for at least uh, a minute and repeating about five times. Uh, you can take uh, you can take advantage of the your body weight 
Okay, so when you're putting pressure onto your palm and with your uh, your your elbows extended, for example, you're going to target upper limb, then you can you can actually tilt your body towards that limb to actually apply more pressure and thus more axial joint pressure towards that region. So the mechanism is to stimulate proprioceptive receptors in the joint, which will help to inhibit muscle spasticity and in long run helps to recalibrate the muscle tonicity. Contraindication is patricide advanced or severe osteoarthritis, septic joints, and also tumors. Then we have coordination training. So you might have to use uh, items like cones, balls, cups, pegs, and even, uh, even the, the pegboard. Lah. So the indication is poor coordination skill, uh, poor stroke, or any cerebellar condition. So the duration is about five to 10 minutes. Method is to position the objects uh, in a way which they can see and instruct the patient to move the, the limb, be the hand or the leg, to the specified cues. So there's a visual cue, and you can even give auditory cues, which can, uh, you can increase the complexity by adding uh, more cues, or you can add rhythm for them to follow. So with, uh, instead of following their time, they will follow a rhythm so that uh, you know, they might have to catch up with the rhythm and increase the complexity. So the mechanism is we're utilizing the Frankel's exercise principle to enable tuning of the coordinated movements. So Frankel's exercise principle says that uh, uh, we have to give clear uh, cues, make sure the patient is positioned in a way that they can actually see the visual cue. Okay, and you instruct them to reach on, reach towards uh, a specific cue. Let's say, reach towards the red cone, reach towards the yellow cone. Okay, are they able to do the movement uh, uh, quickly? And how's the quality of the movement? Is it smooth or is it jagged? All these qualities you have to uh, take into consideration. Then the contraindication is uh, fracture size, of course, advanced severe osteoarthritis, so they cannot wait there, septic joints and tumors. Functional exercise services. So these ones are more targeted uh, relating to ADL daily function. Okay, so we have four here. We have early mobilization, uh, CIMT, weight shifting exercise, and also cage training. So early mobilization, you might need to, re you might require chair or wheelchair, and it's indicated phases. This is just, uh, the duration is about five to ten minutes to transfer them to, to the wheelchair. Method is to assist patient to sit at the edge of the bed, so transferring the patient onto the wheelchair. So the mechanism of early mobilization the principle is that it helps to encourage limb movement and also improves the while also preventing complications from prolonged bed rest. So the longer they stay on the bed without movement, the more the higher the risk of bed immobility or immobility related complications. So having them sit or change positions helps to uh, regulate the blood circulation and also helps to improve their chance of recovery. So the contraindication is uh, acute stage um, uh, post operation, uh, where the, the wound hasn't healed or the specific part hasn't healed yet. Uh, uh, vertigo, okay, if you're shifting movement too fast or whatnot, they get dizzy. Acute inflammatory condition, and uh, this one is just a uh, precaution it's a postural hypotension. You're moving too fast, uh, the blood pressure might drop okay, from lying to sitting. So, be careful. If you see any symptoms, make sure to check your vital signs, SPO2, and so blood pressure. Next one is CIMT, which is Constraint Induced Movement Therapy. So this technique has been researched uh, over the, the past decade and has shown uh, promising results for post-stroke, especially those with unilateral neglect. So what I mean by unilateral neglect is uh, for those with post-stroke, they will tend to neglect the stroke site, the weak site, they will use more of their hand and they tend to forget that the, uh, in the severe cases, they, they tend to forget that their stroke site is there. Okay, they're just using their normal site. They're just living their daily life using their, their normal site until they forget the stroke site. So we want to prevent that by uh, providing this constraint induced movement therapy. So the equipments that you require is something like bandages, sling, glove, mitts, 
So all these things you can use to actually constrain the normal site, forcing them to use their their stroke site basically. So in order for this to work, they're able they, they must be able to number one uh, understand our commands and follow our commands. Uh, number two, they have some degree of movement at their hand. It has to have at least some motor function of the hand. Totally paraplegic, then this uh, therapy is not suitable. So uh, the duration you can apply is about five to ten minutes. So the method is you have to tie the normal side limb, uh, let's say uh, in a mitt or inside a glove, okay, uh, to inhibit it from to stop them from assisting the unaffected side, the affected side lah. Uh, while you're performing ADL activity. So you can see the picture uh, example here. The normal side, they're using like a glove and then the affected side, yeah, the, the physiotherapist is instructing them to turn the page affected hand. So over time, the the neurons in the brain, uh, if, if you know about uh, neuroplasticity, okay, where the brain can actually mold and relearn lost movements. So they can actually gain it faster. Okay, because when you use it, you improve it. When you when you don't use it, you lose it lah. So the mechanism is forces the use of the affected site by restraining the unaffected site, enabling better relearning of the affected arm. So the contraindicate contraindication is let's say there's wounds, poor GCS, you know, uh, not really conscious, maybe delirium, or maybe unable to follow command, and. Uh, if there's no uh, no sufficient motor control. Next one is weight bearing and shifting exercise. I grouped them together. Uh, so the equipment required is walking frame and balance foam. So the indication is uh, usually post stroke after six weeks. Uh, post surgery, post stroke. So duration is about five to ten minutes. Uh, method is have patient stand on the foam with walking frame support, leaning towards. One side for 10 seconds, switching and repeating each side for a total of 10 repetitions each. The mechanism is uh, uh, enables relearning of the shifting and retaining center of balance through stimulating, uh, stimulating joint proprioception. Okay, when you're shifting to one side and the other side, they're actually putting an axial load on the lower limb from the feet all the way up to the hip and spine. So this one helps to uh, stimulate the proprioceptions uh, uh, receptors in the joint and also help them actually feel the center of balance. Okay, so it helps to retrain them where is the center of balance. So the contraindication is acute stage uh, post operation, for example, acute inflammatory conditions. And if they have poor static balance, they have poor st uh, standing static balance, uh, this one is not suitable for them yet. And you should work on the poor static balance first and then come back to the weight bearing or weight shifting exercise. And then lastly, we have gait training. So gait training requires uh, walking aids or without walking aids, uh, depending on the patient's requirement. Uh, walking aids are like walking frame, squat pod, and walking stick. So the indication is uh, if they have a poor walking pattern uh, in the chronic stage, poor walking endurance, meaning that they cannot go long distance. Short distance and they are already fatigued. Poor dynamic balance. So the duration is about 5 to 10 minutes. Method is a uh, progressive training, uh, meaning that you want to try, you want to have them do sit to stand first, uh, and then stand for, for one minute. Okay. And after that, progress to a short distance, about five meters, for example, and then uh, slowly progress to even longer distance. Uh, this one will be uh, these goals you have to set first session. Hope you can achieve it. Lah. Uh, um, the mechanism is functional training to strengthen and improve endurance of the lower limb muscle. Joint appropriation to recalibrate muscle tonicity. So it's contraindicated for acute stage uh, post op, vertigo, acute inflammatory condition, and poor study. The main part of the today's talk, which is the regimes and protocols for each of the services and also the packages. Okay, so this one is very important. Please pay attention. So the first one is uh, physiotherapy for ache and pain. So ache is a continuous pain as opposed to sharp pangs and twinges. And ache can be either dull and constant as in some types of back ache or throbbing as in some types of headaches and toothache. So throbbing is like a headache, some sort of toothache, okay, sati igi. And then continuous pain is like uh, almost 24 hours like a nagging pain. Pain in general is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. 
arising from actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. Pain includes the perception of an uncomfortable stimulus and the response to that perception. About half of those who seek medical help do so because the primary complaint is pain. So this one is very uh, important to know that uh, you can expect at least more than half more than half of the clients that seek physiotherapy is because of pain. The chief complaint is pain. Okay? So here are some of the things uh, you need to take into consideration. So uh, let's look at acute versus chronic pain. So acute pain is usually from day one to day 12 after the initial pain. Okay? Uh, it's the pain that restricts daily activities for at least one month or less. Subacute pain is a subset of acute pain with pain present from at least six weeks, but less than 12 weeks, okay? less than three months, but it's more than uh, six weeks, we call that subacute. And then chronic is more than 12 weeks, more than three months, okay? it's been going on for more than three months and has been uh, restricting their ADLs, disturbing them during their work, or disturbing them when you're trying to change shirt, Monday for more than three months. We call that chronic. So let's look at the uh, protocol regime for uh, physiotherapy for ache and pain, one session. So this one is per session. The goal is to reduce their bus score, visual analytics, uh, visual analog uh, scale, score to less than or equals to six out of 10. So let's say their, their complaint is uh, eight out of 10, then our goal is to reduce that to six out of 10. If their, com if their complaint, they're saying the pain is about six out of 10, then you've already achieved the goal. Then you move on to the next goal, which is to improve the pain-free range of motion of the affected limb, back or the neck, by about 10 degrees of the of of their available range of motion, okay? or until full range is allowed. So if they already full range, if they already have full range, then uh, then you focus more on the bus score. If their bus score is already achieved at six out of ten, then you focus more on the uh, range of motion. So let's look at the type of services. Firstly, uh, for the first 2.5 minutes, okay, uh, you will be uh, introducing yourself and you'll be starting the initial assessment. Try to get uh, uh, all the key points in the history taking for subjective assessment okay, uh, within this this part. Uh, and the subjective assessment will also include the pain assessment, what sort of pain they have. And then you move on to tense uh, using the normal mode, 100 hertz, uh, 180 mi uh, microseconds. This one is for acute setting and the duration is about 20 minutes. During those 20 minutes, then you can ask even more elaborate uh, history taking to understand the, the client. Um, next into soft tissue manipulation, you can do petrisage, uh, which is which is um, uh, needing and also you can do a trigger point release okay, for 10 minutes. Then is a stretching exercise. Then uh, for the uh, stretching exercise, we can do a gentle stretch uh, within a tolerable range and uh, passive lah, passively for five minutes. Range of motion exercise, uh, gentle pain free range, about five minutes. And then you can end it with uh, cryotherapy or thermotherapy, depending on the type of pain, acute or chronic. If chronic pain, use thermotherapy. If acute pain, use cryotherapy. About 15 minutes. And then you will reassess uh, to check the efficacy of the session and improvements. Okay. And from here, you can actually uh, uh, promote them, promote if, if they want a, a more complex comprehensive program, they can take the 10 sessions package, which has a, a progressive uh, regime. This one is just one off. Okay, speak of which, this is the physiotherapy for ache and pain package, which is 10 sessions. So during the first two, during sessions one and three, our goal is to achieve the same. Basically, uh, during the first to third session, we are following the same as the, the sessional package. Okay, even the goal is the same. Lah. 
We do six out of 10, achieve uh, uh, 10 degrees improvement in range of motion for every allowed, and the services are the same. Okay, when you move into the fourth to sixth uh, session, then the goals are changed. The goals, you, have, you want to achieve a score of less than or equal to four out of 10, and then you want to improve the range of motion by 20 degrees or until full range is achieved. Um, the initial assessment, tense, settings are all the same. Uh, soft tissue, soft tissue manipulation is also the same. Uh, then we come into uh, stretching exercise. Um, uh, previously it was gentle stretch, now we're going into sort of a normal stretch. Before this, we were more cautious about stretching, but now we're moving more on, on to the normal type of stretches. Uh, hold the position for uh, 10 to 15 seconds for about five times. Then we want to uh, proceed to range of motion exercise, uh, pain-free range, and then we want them to actually uh, initiate active assisted, use their own hand, or have them actually use a stick to achieve the range of motion. Uh, if it's the hand. Lah. Five minutes. And then we, we are going into thermotherapy. So by, by, by the fourth session, I would assume that it has been about one month uh, after, one month plus after the, your first session, if, if that first session is the acute pain. Okay. So in that case, uh, then uh, we will stick with thermotherapy. But if it's within one month session, uh, one month duration for the fourth session, then you would still go for cryotherapy. And then reassess to check the any improvements. And then the session seven to ten. Okay, uh, our goal is to achieve the VAS score of two out of ten, or two uh, less than or equal to two out of ten. And then we want to actually have them uh, at least able to return to work and perform ADLs with minimal pain. We want them to achieve uh, pain-free full range of motion or the range of motion same to the unaffected side. Okay, if you're talking about shoulder, if the normal side can go about 170 degrees, then the affected side try to target about 170 degrees. Uh, and try to achieve within these uh, session periods. So initial assessment is the same. Tense, you want to change to chronic setting. Soft tissue manipulation, uh, battery stage, trigger point really same. Stretching exercise, uh, still passive. Range of motion exercise, we have already progressed to active. And then thermotherapy, and then uh, reassessment. Any questions for uh, ache and pain packages? What to do within these packages? Or any uncertainty? Anything you want to ask? If no, we'll proceed to the next package, uh, which is uh, arthritis. So arthritis is an acute or chronic joint inflammation that often coexists with pain and structural damage. So two things, pain and structural damage. Okay? Anyone can get arthritis, including children, young people, and young people. It can affect people from all backgrounds, ages, and lifestyle. So let's look at the regime for arthritis. One session. So the, the name of the service is physiotherapy for arthritis, one session. So the goal is to minimize pain and vascular to less than or equal to six out of 10, improve the pain-free range of motion affected by 10 degrees, or until full range if is allowed. Um, Okay, so initial assessment, tense. Tense is set into chronic, uh, chronic uh, setting. 
okay, usually arthritis like osteoarthritis, uh, they would refer to as when it's already in a chronic stage. Okay, most commonly lah. Like they say, I've had this pain for about six months and it's getting even worse. Uh, so from there, you you know you want to set the setting to burst mode. If they say it's within one one month, it started and I'm worried, then you change it to acute setting, which is the normal mode, 180 hertz. Uh, 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 what was it? 170 microseconds. You want to first uh, start with maintenance grades one and two, which is targeted for pain relief. Five minutes. Stretching exercise, uh, gentle, passive. Range of motion exercise, gentle, pain free. Also passive. Strengthening exercise, you want to uh, initiate them to do mini squats. Okay, mini squats is not half squats, mini squats is like three quarter squats. Uh, have them uh, hold onto somewhere to support and uh, do the uh, mini squats about 10 times, two sets. And we end the session with cryotherapy. Okay, coming into physiotherapy for arthritis package, 10 sessions. Goal is to minimize the pain, mass score uh, to less than 6 out of 10. Okay, uh, This one is this, almost the same as the, the sessional one. Okay, uh, But I've included here with uh, more than or equals to 50% 50, 50 affected joint glide range. If it's the knee, you want to achieve uh, the joint glide of the patella uh, to improve at least more than half of its range. Yeah, you can actually compare with the normal side with the affected side. Then you want to achieve more than or equal to 50% of the range of motion for the affected joint. Okay, if flexion or extension of the, of the particular joint is uh, limited. Or until and uh, joint mop, stretching, range of motion, strengthening, uh, cryotherapy, and post treatment. So this one is the same as the sessional. When coming into session three, uh, less than or equals to four out of ten, with uh, more than or equals to seventy five percent improvement in the joint glide range. Okay, you want to get them to achieve seventy five percent degrees uh, more than or equals to for the joint glide. Okay, and then to achieve more than or equals to seventy five percent range. Okay, so the maintenance uh, we have uh, we have increased to grade three to grade four to actually target more improvement in range of motion for the joint glide. Stretching exercise, range of motion exercise, uh, uh, range of motion exercise we have improved to we have increased to active assisted. Strengthening exercise uh, we have changed to half squats, okay, which is a bit lower in range, ten reps, uh, two sets, and then we end with cryotherapy. Then session seven to ten. You want to minimize the pain to achieve at least less than or equal to 2 out of 10 with a uh, joint glide about more than uh, more than or equal to 90% uh, joint glide range and able to do most ADLs pain free. Then you want to also achieve more than or equal to 90% range of motion for the affected joint, 90% uh, full range of flexion or extension, for example. And then the MMT of the affected muscle, about four plus out of five, uh, means that it's good, good uh, strength and able to uh, resist a good amount of uh, resistance. Yeah. Initial assessment, ten stretch, uh, all of them is the same uh, techniques. Range of motion, uh, also active assisted strengthening. We've gone to, we've, we've moved to full squats. Okay, if you want to know what full squat is. Have them stand up from a chair and then have them try to squat almost sitting but not touching the chair. That is full squat. So 10 repetitions, 2 sets. And then we want to initiate gait training. Gait training with walking aid progress to without walking aid. So you can start with 3 rounds uh, and then you can progress plus 2 per session. Maybe you can achieve about, uh, if 1 round is about 5 meters, then you can you can achieve about 15 meters for the first session 15 15 uh 15 let's see 10 and probably 25 15 uh, 25 35 by the 10th session you can achieve about 35 35 meters and then thermotherapy 
and ureases. Physiotherapy for post fracture. So this one is uh, mainly immediately after the fracture, and maybe if the fracture does not go for for surgery. Okay, so this one is uh, what do you call it? Uh, we don't opt for surgical for surgical that one. So a fracture is a discontinuity in a bone or cartilage resulting from mechanical forces that exceed the bone's ability to withstand them. So a bone is actually like a structural frame. And the, the duty is actually to absorb shock to some degree, so it's not really invincible, to some degree before it, it cracks and it fractures. So let's look at the type of fractures uh, that you might come across maybe in the x-rays. You have open compound fractures, which uh, the fracture has, has uh, pierced the skin close, which is not, which is still inside the the contained area displaced unstable fracture portions are separated and misaligned or misaligned non displaced fracture are somewhat aligned complete means that it extends all the way across the bone incomplete means it doesn't uh, doesn't cross the bone completely which is usually in children like a green stick fracture uh, complex or comminuted fracture is where there's three or more fragments of the fracture at the side of fracture then there's also wedged fracture, which one uh, usually occurs in the front of the vertebra. Okay, uh, collapsing uh, the bone in front of the spine, leaving the back of the same bone unchanged, which results in vertebra taking on a wedged shape. Then we have transverse fracture, where the fracture is perpendicular to the axis of the bone. Linear fracture, linear fracture or fissure fracture, which is a breakage running parallel with the long axis of the bone. Oblique fracture is oriented obliquely across the bone and spiral means uh, it spirals around the bone like a helical fracture pathway. It's common in twisting surgery, uh, twisting injury. Then we have green stick, which is in children, usually for uh, soft bones where it will fracture on one side and then cause a bend. Okay, and then we have avulsion fracture. The function fracture is when a small chunk of bone attached to a tendon or a ligament gets pulled away from the main part of the bone. Okay, this one is, uh, as a physiotherapist, we have to be careful, uh, especially when you're stretching like a contracture, patient with contractures, because the muscle has shortened, and when you try to force the stretch, overstretch it, and it will pull the attachment bone with it, piece of it, and cause an avulsion, avulsion fracture. Okay, we also have an uh, impacted fracture where the bone, the broken ends of the bones are jammed together by the force of the injury. <coughs> uh, buckle due to direct axial load, the cortex is buckled often in distal radius bone. Uh, bowing or bowing, uh, incomplete fracture of the long bone in infant children due to forces in the axial load. Okay, and segmental. Uh, the bone has fractured in segments. And there's a floating segment of the bone. Okay, now that you know about the types of fractures, moving into the phases of fracture healing. We have an uh, inflammatory phase, which is usually 0 to 2 weeks, uh, where there's hematoma formation. Okay, and immediately after the fracture, there will be bleeding in the area, and then there's going to be hematoma to help contain the, the, the injured site. And then there's going to be soft callus formation, which is the which is the the, fr the frame mesh, okay, frame mesh where the important cells, osteoblast and osteoplast, will act. Okay, after that there will be hard callus formation within it after three to six uh, three weeks to six weeks, and then after eight weeks to two weeks two years sorry. It's going to be bone remodeling, separated into inflammatory phase, reparative phase, and remodeling phase. Let's look at the protocol for post fracture. Uh, one session, sessional. So the goal is to minimize the swelling. You use pain and vascular to six out of ten. <coughs> Prevent immobility complication. After fracture, we want to immobilize the 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 but the fractured site, but we don't want to have any complication. So we start with initial assessment. Ten. Range of motion. Okay, when I mean by range of motion is the uh, ankle pumps and hand pumps, depending on the fracture site, so that will help to improve the blood flow throughout throughout the affected limb. Five minutes. Uh, strengthening exercise. Uh, you start with isometric. Okay, so that the bone doesn't move. Positioning. 
uh, you want to try to elevate the swollen area okay, gently. Soft tissue manipulation, uh, after rush for any edema, actually. Then you end with cryotherapy. Uh, physiotherapy for post fracture package 10 sessions uh you start with session one to three is about the same lah uh you look at the the goals and also the services you will follow the sessional as well as now it's the same sessions four to six you want to reduce swelling reduce pain and vast score to four out of ten introduce partial weight bearing and balance training achieve more than 50 percent of range of motion on the so initial assessment Major motion, we will do active assisted major motion, 10 reps, 2 sets. And then we move to strengthening exercise. We will initiate eccentric control. Okay, uh, this one can only start if they, if after one month, at least when the bone has, has somewhat fused. Stretching exercise, gentle, passive, 5 reps, 10 second hold. Soft tissue, effluent, petri uh, weight bearing training. We will start with walking frame, partial weight bearing. What I mean by partial weight bearing is like tiptoe on the affected limb, or the other other normal limb will fully support. Try to weight shift to the affected limb and back. Ten reps, ten seconds, and then balance training in sitting. Okay, static progress to dynamic. Dynamic when sitting, you can have them try to reach forward to touch your hand or touch an object, or reach forward to pick up an object from the floor. Yeah, all, all that uh, uh, is part of dynamic balance. Then cryotherapy and then reassessment. Lastly, uh, for post fracture package, you want to reduce the pain and pass score to less than 2 out of 10, achieve less than or equal to 90% range of motion of the affected part, MMT about 4 to 5, 4 out of 5, and do mostly uh, ADL. So the initial service is. Uh, uh, so the, the type of services is initial assessment, range of motion, which is uh, more active now, uh, strengthening exercise, we have progressed to concentric, stretching exercise, passive, uh, gait training, uh, slowly progressing to without walking in if possible. If not, if uh, pre-fracture uh, condition was using walking aid, then we maintain the walking aid. Weight bearing training uh, with walking frame, uh, full weight shifting now instead of partial. Balance training, we've got, uh, we started standing, static and dynamic uh, balance. Cry therapy and post okay, And for the last uh, subcategory package for today, we'll look at post spine hip knee surgery. So, vertebral or spinal fractures are the most common fractures occurring in 30 to 50% of people over the age of 50 resulting in significantly increased mobility and mortality. Hip fractures, while occurring less frequently, are the most devastating fractures as 20% of those who suffer from hip fracture die within six months. So let's look at some of the common uh, surgeries for spine, hip and knee. So the four common spine surgeries include discectomy, foraminectomy, laminectomy, and also spinal fusion. So discectomy is removal of all or part of the disc, of a disc, sorry, which is a cushion that separates the spine bones or the vertebras if it has slipped out of place. Okay. Foraminectomy is uh, aims to widen the opening in the back of the spine where the nerve roots enter and enter the spinal canal. As you know, nerve roots will uh, go out bilaterally, upwards at the back there, and will go to uh, wherever it used to go, and uh, to remove the pressure on the nerve. So sometimes uh, there's going to be bone spurs which will impinge onto the spinal, uh, onto the nerve roots. So for anatomy, will have to widen the area so then there's less impingement or irritation to the nerve roots. Laminectomy removes damaged discs and bones to make additional room for spinal column and and then we have spinal fusion. If some of the uh, some of you are lucky to see is a uh, is where they permanently connect two or more of the vertebras. Often performed to treat lower back pain, broken bones, unstable spines, or abnormal curvatures like uh, scoliosis, you know, side to side, 
or dumbbell and dosi, especially for older elderly with uh, hunchback, severe hunchback. So they will they will do this spinal uh, spinal fusion procedure to help improve their quality of life. Let's look at the types of hip placement. We have hemi arthroplasty, where the acetabulum is spared, whereas the femoral head and neck are replaced with a metal uh, metal uh, implant. Uh, total hip arthroplasty, or THA, uh, where the uh, both the head of the femur, neck, as well the as well as the acetabulum is replaced. And then we have resurfacing total hip arthroplasty where in a resurfacing uh, res uh, where the femoral head sorry, and the acetabulum are replaced uh, whereas the femoral neck is carried. We have the options here. So most of the fractures uh, that happen in LED happens at the neck of femur. Sorry, neck of uh, yeah, neck of femur. So from there they, they will replace they will tend to do THA or total hip if they see any degeneration at the S develop as well uh, due to aging. Uh, if no, they will go for hemiarthroplasty. If it's a fracture that happens only on the head of uh, femur, maybe they can spare the neck of femur and do the resurfacing total hip arthroplasty. Let's look at the common types of knee surgery. We have arthroscopy. Meniscus repair, ACL reconstruction, patella cordyceps tendon repair, partial knee re replacement, and knee replacement for total knee replacement surgery. Arthros arthroscopy is usually a close, uh, close surgery where they debride or clean up joint, uh, sorry, uh, the condyle joints, uh, joint surfaces. Meniscus repair is, as the name suggests, is there to clean up uh, the meniscus if there's a uh, 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 if the particular patient or client is complaining of pain whenever they are, they are placing pressure or jumping or doing aggressive spot, maybe it's because of the meniscus inflamed meniscus that's causing the pain, or they might remove remove part or debride or clean up the meniscus. Then we have ACL reconstruction dot, uh, due to torn ACL, uh, which causes instability in the knee. So what they do is they they will screw back in the tendon of the ACL so that it becomes functional. As you know, uh, ligaments and uh, ligaments and to some extent the tendons, the blood circulate blood supply to those structures are less. So to have them to wait for them to naturally heal will be very long. So surgical intervention is recommended for uh, ligament. Uh, injury tendon injury. Okay, patella quadriceps tendon repair uh, is to reconnect uh, those tendons of the patella, uh, patella tendon, and also the quadriceps tendon. Partial knee replacement is uh, is done if there is uh, if there is uh, osteoarthritis degeneration, severe degeneration, and pain inducing uh, condition between the joints of the femur and the tibia. So the tibio femoral joint, tibio femoral joint. Sorry. Uh, for a total knee replacement surgery, it's recommended if the three joints, sorry, uh, the uh, three surfaces of the knee joint is affected. So this one will also include the uh, patello femoral, patello tibia, tibio femoral. All three joints are affected. They will go for total knee replacement surgery. So let's look at the protocol regime. Uh, for this post spine hip knee surgery, one session. The goal is to minimize the swelling, pain, so less than 6 out of 10, prevent immobility complications. So, the type of services is initial assessment, tense, major motion, strengthening, positioning, soft tissue manipulation, and prior therapy. So, for the tense, we want to set for acute setting. Range of motion is basically circulation exercise to improve blood circulation, so ankle pumps or hand pumps. Strengthening exercise, uh, strengthening exercise, we start with isometric, SQE as a IRQ, okay, five minutes. Positioning, you want to position pillows to support the joint uh, and also re uh, prevent swelling. And then STM, you, you can do epidurage, and if the scar has, has closed up, you can do scar massage. Just to soften the scars, and then you can end it with cryotherapy and reassessment. Uh, if they take se uh, ten sessions package, okay, then here are the team. Okay, so the first one is practically the same as sessional one. The sessions four to six, uh, we have changed goals. We use pain and pain score to less than four out of ten. Partial weight bearing and balance training achieve more than seventy five percent range of motion on the affected part.
So range of motion, you have changed to active assisted. 10 reps to set. Strengthening is eccentric. Uh, stretching, we have included soft tissue manipulation, weight bearing training with walking frame. So it's partial weight bearing first. Uh, and then uh, balance training and sitting, uh, static progress to dynamic practice. Then cryotherapy, then reassessment. And then lastly, session 7 to 10, we want to try to achieve uh, less than or equal to 10, 2 out of 10 for VASCO. Achieve uh, almost full range of motion, a good amount of MMT, uh, boarding, and also enable them to do most of their ideals independently. Uh, initial assessment, range of motion. Range of motion is, should, should be tried to achieve actively. Con strengthening exercise, we want to introduce concentric contraction. Uh, stretching exercise, passive. Gait training with walking aid, progress to without walking aid. Uh, three rounds, progressive plus two per session. Weight bearing, weight bearing training, you want to uh, achieve foot weight, full weight shifting. 10 reps, 10 second move each. And then balance training, standing, static, progress to dynamic, cryotherapy, and then uh, lastly, reassessment. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned was, uh, let's say once you, fin you finish the 10 session ticket uh, and you're interested to continue the 10 session, uh, you can reuse the uh, session 7 out of 7 to 10 sessions goal if you have not achieved the goals yet. Lah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the, due to several factors which you have to explain to the clients, that there are several factors which will influence the recovery uh, or the prognosis. Maybe aging factor will make it less, uh, uh, making the progression for healing slower compared to adults. Okay. So that, those are the things we need to in, in, uh, notify the clients. Lah. So by session 7 to 10, they haven't achieved the goal. We can recommend them to continue another 10 session or for if they so thank you everyone for attending the session see you in part two